Recall from listing 2 on the right that a reference to the picture object that encapsulates our image is stored in the variable named pic. Listing 4 on the right, which defines our algorithm, begins by calling the method named getPixels on the reference stored in the variable named pic. The getPixels method returns a reference to a special object that I refer to as an array object. That object encapsulates a one-dimensional array. All of the pixels in the image are returned in that array object as references to a set of objects of the class named pixel. A reference to that array object is stored in the local reference variable of type pixel square brackets named pixel array. Note that type pixel square brackets is not the same as type pixel. Instead, the type pixel square, square brackets, when applied to a reference variable, states that the reference variable can hold a reference to a special array object, each of whose elements can store a reference to an object of the class pixel. Listing 4 also defines a special kind of for loop that is often referred to as a for each loop. This loop is used in listing 4 to access and to process each pixel in the array. It's also important to note that a conventional for loop could also have been used here just as well. During each iteration of the for loop, the three statements inside the for loop modify the color values of a single pixel. The first two statements inside the for loop invert the red and green color values by subtracting those color values from 255. The third statement inside the for loop simply sets the blue color value to zero for the current pixel. When the for loop terminates, every pixel in the image will have been modified according to the algorithm that I described earlier. This in turn will produce the output image on the lower right of your screen that I am pointing to now. Note that this algorithm is not a reversible process, in particular because the blue color values were all set to zero, it is not possible to reconstruct their values and therefore the image was modified in an irreversible manner. However, if the blue color values had simply been inverted instead of setting them to zero, the process would be reversible. 
all that is necessary or all that would be necessary to recover the original image would be to invert all of the pixels again using the standard inversion algorithm as described in Erickson's textbook. Color inversion is a very important process in many areas of computing that involve images. That's because the process is computationally cheap, very fast, usually visually obvious, and totally reversible. Many programs invert all of the colors in an image when it is selected for some purpose, such as copying to the clipboard. Then the colors are restored to their individual values when the image is deselected. Getting back to the code in listing 2, the variable name pick still contains a reference to the picture object. However, the image that is in encapsulated in that object has been significantly modified. The code in the run method in listing 5 calls the explore method on that picture object to create and display another picture explorer object. The new object encapsulates a copy of the picture object with the modified image. The result of calling the explorer method on the picture object in lift listing 5 is to produce the picture explorer object shown on the bottom right hand side of your screen. The code in listing 5 also signals the end of the run method as well as the end of the class name prob02 runner. When the run method in listing 5 terminates, control is returned to the code shown in listing 1 at the bottom right of your screen. The remaining code in the main method on the bottom right of your screen calls a getter method named getPicture to get a reference to the modified picture object and pass that object's reference to the print line method. This in turn causes some text information to be displayed on the command line screen. That information is shown in the last line in figure 3 on the upper right of your screen. At this point the main method would like to terminate and return control to the operating system. However, the main method isn't allowed to terminate until the user purposely disposes of the two images shown in figure one and shown on the right hand side of your screen, <clears throat> which is typically done by clicking the large X in the upper right hand corner of the picture explorer object. When the user disposes of those two images forcing them to leave the screen the main method terminates and returns control to the operating system. In this lesson you have learned about the picture explorer class and you have also learned how to implement a partial color inversion algorithm. Along the way you learned about Erickson's getPixels method, you learned about her 
pixel class. You learned about some of the methods belonging to an object of the pixel class and you learn some other programming details as well. That concludes lecture number two titled Image Processing Algorithms, Image Inversion, and Picture Explorer Objects in which you learned about the Picture Explorer class and you also learned how to implement a partial color inversion algorithm. You will find more information on these topics on my website at www.dickbaldwin.com.